What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. I am so excited for today's episode because in today's episode, we're gonna talk all about fruit trees. It's a very common question that we get asked when people say, Luke, I planted my fruit trees five, seven years ago and they've never given me any fruit. Or Luke, my fruit trees fruited the first year and have never fruited since. What's going on? What can I do to help them? And when can I call it quits? So all of that and more is gonna be discussed in today's episode, so I hope you guys are going to enjoy. Make sure to click the thumbs up button because it really does help this channel out, and also make sure to subscribe. We have so much more content coming out, and so you might not even have fruit trees, so even if you don't find this video informative, we have lots of other videos coming out and tons more videos we already have uploaded on our channel, so just make sure you subscribe, join the family, and uh, let's get on into today's video. So whenever we get this question, it always strikes home because we do have two fruit trees, two apple trees that have been an absolute pain in the butt to grow. We planted these apple trees six years ago and since planting them, they have not given us anything. Now we do have years where we'll get some kind of meh fruits and I mean, I, don't even, I can't even see any. That's how few we have. But there's so few fruits that the pests just hone in on them and we usually have the fruits that are just all gnarly and misshapen. Now, some would say, well, try spraying your trees. But it's very difficult to spray your trees when there's no fruits already on them. And that really comes back to fruit set when you actually have flowers. So every year we do get lots of flowers. And that's the first thing that I would ask you is, are you getting lots of flowers? Because if you are getting lots of flowers, there's just something happening, there's a lapse with pollination that's causing a lack of fruit. Now there can also be a lack of fruit set once the fruits actually are set. If they're, you know, if the apples are falling off or all your fruits are dropping off, it could be anything, peaches, cherries, plums, apples, pears, it doesn't matter. If the fruits are setting and then falling off, that's a different issue, which we'll get into. But the first thing that you really wanna assess is do you have a good, vibrant uh, you know, cross-pollination ecosystem? You, what you need is you need multiple trees to provide adequate crosses. And the thing that's tricky is different trees are, are different, uh, or different trees pollinate differently, I should say. Um, so when it comes to apple trees, apple trees don't all cross with each other. Now you do need a cross, but say Summer Crisp needs a Fuji, and Fuji might need a Macintosh. And they do find that if you find these specific crosses, they will do better. Now all apple trees will cross with all other apple trees, including wild apples, but they don't always have the best results. And so if you're planting say one tree and you're out in the middle of a field or you're you know, far away from other uh, apple trees, it can cause the, the, the flowers to basically be, be sterile. They won't ever cross with anything and that can be an issue. The second thing that can cause this is uh, if you have flowers um, and then you have a late frost or an early frost. If you're in climates where the fruit tree can grow but the flowers have a hard time, what you need to find is you need, a, you need a variety that has more chill hours. This is the amount of hours required to actually induce flowering. And so the longer the chill hours, the longer it's going to take for it to start flowering. The lower the chill hours, the, least, the, the less amount of hours it needs and basically the sooner it'll flower. So for instance, here in Michigan, what does very well is 600 to 800 chill hours. These are, the amount, these are the amount of hours at or below freezing. And so if you have, uh, if you have a, a peach tree, for instance, a common chill hour is between 300 and 600 chill hours. For apples, a common chill hour is between 400 and 800. If you're lower on the spectrum, those flowers might open sooner and then they're killed off with a frost. The tree will be fine, but the flowers won't be. And so just make sure that you're going with a longer chill hour apple or whatever fruit you're going with if you're getting winter weather because the flowers might open and then they're killed and then that renders them dead as well. The third reason why your fruit trees might not be setting fruit is because they're not being properly maintained. This tree here started out pretty well maintained. However, it could use a pruning and it might be one of the reasons why this tree is not really setting a lot of fruit. Now it did blossom a lot in the spring it just didn't set a lot of fruit later on. And so again, there's kind of that lapse in between there are blossoms, but the blossoms are not setting fruit. Now I do have multiple fruit trees and I do have adequate crosses in the area. Um, so I'm not concerned about that. 
So might it be that the fruit trees are not being maintained? And that's a possibility. Um, one of the things you really wanna look at is how much foliage is the fruit tree producing every single year? Is it doubling in size? Is it tripling in size? If it's growing and growing at an exponential rate, what can happen is it can basically prioritize growing rather than fruiting. And once it reaches a certain age, it will start to dial back and start to fruit more. However, that can take 10 to 20 years for that to actually happen. Uh, apple trees have been known to grow for hundreds of years, and they don't quite reach fully mature age until about year 10 to year 12. And so what you can do is, if you don't wanna wait that long, you can do what a lot of apple growers will do, which is to actually prune their plants back to essentially stop that new growth and prioritize the plant on, on kind of focusing more on fruit production. It'll also keep the plant more manageable and small, which helps with harvesting when the fruit does get set, but also it helps with overall plant health. Because if there's a lot of foliage, what can happen is things like blights and, and um, rust, leaf spot, a lot of fungal diseases and pests can come in if there's a lot of dense foliage. Also, the fruit doesn't ripen very efficiently if there's a lot of foliage because um, the, the sun can't reach the fruits. So you have a lot of uh, like fruit dropping off or fruit rotting because it's not ripening properly. Um, and so uh, there's a lot of benefits to pruning. But one of the biggest ones is more fruit set. And that's because there's so much energy that the plant can, can put out. And if the plant continues to put out energy towards new growth, it's obviously not going to put energy in towards fruiting. So it's very important that, uh, that you as a gardener come in here and you prune about 20% back. Now that seems like a lot, but it's very typical uh, for, for uh, fruit trees that have been grown for more than five years. It's very common to prune back 20 to 25%. And a lot of people will say prune back 30%. Now I don't go quite that dramatic, but on a fully mature fruit tree, you might be able to get, you might be able to, uh, get by with that because um, the root system is so well established and the, you know, the plant or the tree can put out so much more growth that pruning off 30% even probably doesn't even affect the tree. And you're really gonna keep the tree maintained and just kind of keep it consolidated down to this manageable height as well as increase fruit production. So if you've never pruned your fruit trees, give that a shot. Sometimes that can be, that, sometimes that can be the catalyst that actually helps spur on more fruit development. The fourth reason why your fruit trees might not be setting any fruit is because they're lacking nutrients. I have two different leaves here. One is a healthy leaf and one is a sickly leaf. Now this leaf here needs nitrogen and magnesium. I can tell because it's yellowing, but it also has green veins. It's called chlorosis. And so, um, so the, the, the veins are still very green, but the surrounding leaf is yellow. And that's a, a lack of magnesium. Now with a lack of nitrogen, what you'll notice is that the outside leaf will actually start to curl downward and start to turn brittle and, and turn brown. So that tells me that there's a nitrogen deficiency and a magnesium deficiency. Now this applies to apples. Not all fruit trees will respond this same way. Uh, pear trees will also respond the same way as apples will. So depending on the family of, of fruit that you're growing, just kind of look up some of those signs. And, um, and if you're starting to see some of those signs, you can identify them better and you know, remedy the issue. That can be a huge reason why your fruit trees don't set any fruit is because if they're struggling to grow and then they're struggling to basically uh, grow during the main season, they take all that energy, they store it down in their roots. Then in the beginning of the year, when they break dormancy, they produce buds and leaves. If they knew that the previous season was rough, they're not gonna produce any fruit the next season because, well, they're gonna assume that the next season is gonna be just as rough when it comes to nutrients. So if they find the, that the nutrients are there, they're way more likely to set fruit the next year. So even if you're showing signs of a nutrient deficiency now, which we do because this is a nice healthy leaf, as you can see, beautiful, green, gorgeous. That apple tree, it's, it's healthy. This tree, it could use some work. And they're only about five feet apart, but they're showing clear signs of nutrient deficiencies, uh, or this one is at least. And so I wanna address that. I don't wanna wait until the next year to address that. I wanna fertilize now. What I wanna do is I wanna fertilize with an all-purpose, you know, broad spectrum fertilizer. Something that's gonna give them nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, trace minerals, all that good stuff. We're gonna apply Trifecta Plus to this tree because we use Trifecta Plus on everything in our garden, but use whatever you, uh, use whatever you like to use. Anything that's nice and all-purpose is going to be the ticket. Nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, magnesium, calcium, iron, you wanna focus on all of them because you know trees, they use a lot of nutrients and they need 
a really steady supply. Also fertilizing in the spring as well as the fall can help. Fall when they're going into dormancy, kind of like right about now when summer is kind of waning, it's getting later in the season, fertilizing now to get them ready for the winter and then fertilizing them in the spring with lots of nitrogen and, and uh, potassium to help them with vigor and, uh, and coming out of dormancy can help as well. So I like to fertilize my plants twice a year. Before we continue with this video, I'm actually gonna get this tree fertilized right now. That way I don't forget. And also that way you can see how I fertilize my trees. So I basically just take Trifecta Plus and I just broadcast it around the base of the tree. Now you can water it in afterwards. We have rain in the forecast for tonight, so I won't, I won't uh, have to water it in. But you really don't wanna fertilize the base of the tree. You wanna fertilize out more near what's called the drip line. The drip line is where the, uh, the water would naturally shed with the leaves. And that's where the, that's where the root tips are, and that's what's gonna take up the most nutrients. So I'm just, I'm just applying some fertilizer to the soil surface here and then that's gonna work down through the soil as it rains. So that's all you have to do to fertilize. And the fifth and final reason why your fruit trees might stop producing fruit is because they're just getting old. Now, fruit trees do have a life expectancy, just like anything else. And what you'll find is that over time, the fruit trees will just kind of get tired. And this really happens on really old fruit trees, things like 30, 40, 60 years old, depending on the type of fruit tree. Um, peach trees have a life expectancy of about 15 to 20 years, very short. If, you are, if you're growing something like a pear tree, it could be something like 30 to 50 years. Apple trees, their life expectancy could be 50 to 100 years. But as the trees do get older, they do produce less fruit. And so it's just something to consider that you know, if you are getting less and less fruit or you're getting almost no fruit at all, it might be time to just consider replacing the tree. Now again, that only has to do with the age of the tree. If you just planted the tree, it's not nearing its, at the end of its life expectancy. It's pretty new. In the case of our apple trees here, we just planted them, like I said. They were four-year-old trees, and then we, uh, we grew them for five years. So these are only about nine years old. They're only about 10% of the way through their life expectancy. So for them to not be producing any fruit right now tells me that it's not that. But it is nice to have that mental checklist, kind of the troubleshooting guide to say, okay, are my trees old? Have I been fertilizing? Have I been pruning? Do I have any pests, right? Have I even, have I even been checking for pests? Um, you know, do I have a, a tree that's just not really suited for my, my growing season? Are the chill hours too low? You know, are they, are they just getting killed off from the frost every single year? Or, you know, maybe do I not have enough trees in my area? Should I plant some more? Should I make sure that there's a good, uh, you know, a good vibrant cross pollination um, in your, you know, in your area? So these are all the things that you look at and eventually you do kind of come down to some answers that are gonna help you out. And these are all the five reasons why your fruit trees might not be setting any fruit or set fruit initially and stop setting fruit as you grew them. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. Again, if you did enjoy this video, please throw a like up there and share this video with a friend. I know growing fruit trees for me is probably one of the most rewarding things in my garden. Um, they are just, they're so much fun to grow and they can produce so much food. And once you get them established and kind of get them growing, they take very little maintenance after that. Just minor maintenance year to year. Just like I said, some pruning, some fertilizing, maybe the occasional mulching around the, the tree to suppress any grass and weeds and stuff. But other than that, I don't really do anything. And they're so nice. They can produce hundreds of pounds of fruit for you and they can far outlast your life and, uh, and even your children's life. And they can be a gift that you can give future generations. So grow some fruit trees if you've not yet already. And uh, I will catch you all later on uh, the next episode. So as always, grow big or go home. I'll catch you later. See ya.